welcome everybody. Uh, my name's Leanne Humphreys and we're talking today with Dr Phil Parker. Um, Phil's a GP who grew up um, on a farm in a rural community and uh, I understand Phil you also worked as a high school teacher uh, before becoming a GP and I think spending the better part of three decades with the Australian Army. Okay. Um, yeah so with all of those experiences um, Phil's got a really informed perspective on issues of um, trauma-related mental health, physical comorbidities and the implications for their management um, in general practice. So um, uh, welcome, Phil. It's uh, such a pleasure to have you with us. Thanks so very much, Leanne. Uh, today we're going to be talking to Phil about the trauma-related mental health disorders and common physical comorbidities and how he approaches that particular kind of cluster of issues from the, the perspective of the general practitioner. So. Um, Phil, first point, um, we often think of PTSD as the signature trauma-related mental health disorder, but it's not the only one, is it? So what would you most commonly see in general practice? I think, I think uh, we, we, it's important not to consider all trauma-related uh, mental health disorders as, as PTSD. There are different types of PTSD, yeah. but probably the most prevalent one I see is actually exacerbations of things like depression and anxiety, which actually can override the PTSD symptoms. Yeah. 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 Okay. And and so PTSD, depression, anxiety. You, you're going to commonly see those. What kinds of physical comorbidities are you seeing presenting with those? Yeah. So so probably the most common one I think is is the sleep disturbances. You know, which is which is related to 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 the heightening of mood and and to uh, to rumination and and the inability of people to achieve really really good sleep cycles. Yeah. And, yeah. The other one is 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 probably chronic pain, and uh, for people who have these conditions, they tend to. I think it's reasonable for them to have to to understand that chronic pain is quite a burden for them, but it sort of amplifies it when there's an underlying mental health disorder as well. Absolutely. So you're seeing um, kind of an exacerbation, uh, a relationship between how these things are kind of feeding each other. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so given the complexity of those presentations, Phil, um, as a general practitioner, how do you respond? How you, you know? How are you addressing these things when that client or that patient first works, walks through the door with you? Mm. I think I think my primary goal is to gain a holistic assessment. I, I want I, I want to know everything. I want to know. Uh, I want to know the background of the traumas that they've been exposed to. I want to know if there's a history of mental health uh, there. Yep. I want to know their social situation. I want to know about their family environment, uh, their work, uh, because all of these are contributing factors and they're going to influence, in fact, directly influence uh, our, our progress moving forward. Um, I want to know about all the medical conditions, including those physical conditions, because those in themselves can contribute to uh, or influence management as well. Okay, so yeah. so people who have got physical impairments, they tend to become a little bit more socially isolated, uh, and 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 they can't and their self esteem is significantly reduced as a result of that. I want to know about uh, their other health providers uh, and what management has been put in place up until that point. Yeah. Okay. So so you're you're really talking about a very broad based biopsychosocial understanding of the of the person in front of you really holistic understanding and you're talking about um, a really thorough approach to assessment but also you, you're sounds like you're seeing yourself as very um, central to the management or the liaison with other health providers there as well is that right yeah absolutely I through through every step of management I always ensure that the the, the individual the patient is is central with me as we coordinate that care and it's important that and i'll use the term that uh they will be driving but other health providers including me will be navigating okay so they need to be central nice. to their management they need to be intrinsically motivated yeah. uh, and because without that you the success is uh, in terms of uh, outcomes is going to be hard to achieve so Phil, I'm, as a clinical psychologist, I'm hearing that in terms of um, the importance of being really transparent uh, and the importance of giving people control in that process. But you're also talking about um, strategies that speak to the quality of the relationship or the rapport that you're developing with that client. Would you, what are your thoughts about um, re developing relationships with complex uh, trauma impacted individuals? 
It, it's absolutely essential, Leanne. <clears throat> so with, with these patients who have been exposed to trauma, they, they really are looking for health providers who they can trust, who they can confide in. Because, um, you know, part of trauma management or trauma therapies is, is really confronting and really difficult. Yeah. Um, and it can be, and it can be hard. And uh, they want to know that they've got the support of the people around them who care for them, uh, and that's actually going to motivate them and and drive them forward in terms of uh, addressing their own health concerns. Absolutely. And so I'm thinking about um, the general practitioners that I work with, and they are so busy. There, there is, there's an enormous load that they are facing. How, how do you, how do you balance the busyness with the importance of developing those relationships? Because that that seems like a challenge. That seems mm. like a challenge. It, it is very difficult for general practitioners because their, their scope of care is so wide and so demanding yeah. and, and it is hard to dedicate a, a significant amount of, of their clinical time to, to any individual patient. Yeah. But for patients with, with trauma, with a background of trauma, they, they pretty well have to. They need to provide enough time they need to schedule appointments uh, over following weeks to ensure there's lots of really good effective follow-up yep. okay, to, to seek feedback about how things are going. And, and the, the patient themselves, they're looking for an investment of care from that practitioner. Okay? And, that's, and that's really, really important to, to, yeah. to achieve the, back, the outcomes we want. So, so who do you see as, as perhaps the most and I don't know if this is actually um, a question that's answerable, who do you see as the most um, intimately or integral um, health practitioners that, that really should be, just as a matter of course, uh, involved in the care of um, trauma-impacted individuals with these kind of complex presentations? Yeah, it, it's always the general practitioner, Leanne, yeah, always, okay? So the general practitioner has to, has to do an assessment of the whole environment, and we spoke about a holistic assessment earlier okay um, address any issues within that within that environment to provide a really solid foundation and once that foundation is set in place then we can start to, to look towards more specialized therapies including psychology okay so you're talking about really positioning um, kind of getting all those foundational things in place and functioning from the general practitioner's point of view and positioning them as well as you possibly can to kind of then refer them on to other services like psychology, for example, so that they're better positioned to engage in those treatments. Yeah, absolutely. So we know that we know that patients or, or individuals who have had a history of trauma exposure, they need to a lot. The majority of them will require trauma focused therapies, which we've said is, is quite difficult and demanding. Okay, yeah. so they need to be in the best position to. Uh, ready for, for when that commences. They need yeah. to understand what it's going to involve. And there needs to be a lot of feedback between the psychology or, or, or therapist yeah. and the general practitioner to, you know, to identify any concerns that might obstruct uh, progress. Absolutely. Fantastic. Um, that's, Phil, that's really, really helpful. I might just summarise, uh, if that's okay. So you're talking about um, really complex presentations. Uh, you're talking about the importance of a really thorough understanding, developing uh, a, a, a thorough understanding of those problems, developing a really good understanding of the relationship between those problems, how they might kind of perpetuate and feed each other, um, and, and positioning um, your patients as well as possible with regard to, for example, sleep and pain, but a range of other issues as well, uh, other physical uh, comorbidities, and, and positioning them as well as possible then to refer them. But once referred, the GP really maintains a very kind of central process in the management of that case. And you're then really emphasising the, the ongoing communication between all of the treatment providers uh, as well as the patient. Absolutely. Fantastic. And probably an extra one, Leanne, I, I, I failed to talk about is the involvement of family, including spouses. Uh, absolutely. An element absolutely. Of the care too. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And so you're you're looking at um, involving family right from the beginning throughout. Yeah. How do you how do you manage that? So I I often uh, ask about how like like for, if they're married, I ask about how the spouse the spouse is coping for for a lot of the. For a lot of the partners, course, they've actually absolutely. had to endure the burden of living with someone with, with a history of trauma, and that can be really tough. Yeah. We need to make sure that they are well, that they are understanding what's going on in terms of therapy, uh, because their involvement is critical for success. Okay. Yep, absolutely. Uh, and, and I imagine as well um, that burden that you're referring to, that, that might also involve referral onto uh, mental health services for their own needs 
Absolutely, yeah. yes. Okay. Um, Phil, thank you very much. Um, that's That's been really helpful and um, thank you very much for joining me today. Thanks, Leanne. Thank you. Thank you.